high-tech engines need high-tech oils. Welcome to Winton Raceway in Victoria. It started off in Japan and came to our fair shores in 2007. It's a category that's growing in leaps and bounds, not only with entrants, but with spectators as well. It's man and machine against the clock at the Hankook Tires Big Time Attack. The Super Club class is for highly modified cars and Jason Dorrington takes us through his Mazda RX-7. We're in Super Club. Uh, the define of the category is obviously I'm an amateur driver, not a pro driver. And uh, yeah, we've got certain restrictions we can run with. We run with semi-slick tyres, no slicks. You can't rock up with a street type car. You've got to have a highly modified car, you know, including you know, carbon body, body panels and aerodynamic aids and as much uh, mechanical grip as possible and it's pretty unlimited when it comes to that. That's what really interested me. There's no real restrictions on it. Um, have, get, just leave your mind open and, and, and picture what you want in the end and just build it to that category, you know, so it's really good that way. We've got a, a Mazda RX-7, it's the FD RX-7. Uh, 1997 model, it's an import from Japan. Uh, originally started off as just a, a target spec car, so just doing like target type events. And as the bug uh, bites in, you sort of start building it, um, put a plan in place and then uh, just slowly build it over the last three years and yeah, just slowly improving our lap times and obviously getting better as a driver and uh, hopefully we'll get there one day. Major breaking point with uh, a high powered Mazda 13B turbo engine is the gearbox. So I went with a, uh, an FG6 as a TR6060 gearbox out of an FG Falcon turbo. So it's a high, um, uh, high horsepower type box. The ratios are okay for the Mazda, the first four gears are really good. And, but it's very strong and at least you can get to an event and get home with more than likely not breaking the box. At this track at Winton, you don't need massive horsepower, so we sort of stick to around the 400, 400 rear kilowatts. Um, and, but I think up to about 430 you can make, but 400 is sort of reliable for the time attack stuff that we do, um, which is a good number. It gets out of the corners nice. So, and, um, yeah, and it handles really well. Welcome along to Winton Raceway. This time we're taking a look at the top 10 shootout for the Hankook Tires Vic Time Attack. Last time in qualifying, when the Super Street boys were out, Darren Maurice managed to top the sheets with a 131.17. John Richardson managed to get a 132.339. Adam Wade with a 132.9570. Jim Santu's Evo wasn't far behind, with his Mitsubishi Evo 9 achieving a 133.142. In the open category, Kevin Mackerel blitzed the field in his Datsun 560Z, getting a whopping 129.587, securing a spot in the top 10 shootout. Whereas Glenn Latter had a tragic end with engine problems. In Super Club, Benny Tran got the best time of the entire field with a whopping 126.867. The Mazda RX-7 was a handful of seconds behind with a 131.184. And with a few milliseconds splitting them, Ben Arnold crossed the line with a 131.229. The Honda DC2 was back out this time with Brandon Lockwood behind the wheel who managed to clock up a 131.6010. Michael Byrne just squeezed into the top 10 shootout with a 149.0380. Well, the talking's over. It's time for the top 10 shootout in the Hankook Tires Big Time Attack. The car's out on the track, just starting to warm up, getting themselves up to temperature, and their mind switched on for what should be a very interesting session, Terry. Yeah, as I mentioned before, Grant, these guys have got to make sure that they go out and get as much uh, heat into the hand-cooked tyres as they possibly can before they go for the hot lap. That's where the time is gained. As you see, Jim Seng 2 come out, uh, Michael Byrne behind him, Adam Wade will be there as well, and John Richardson back there too as they come through the final corner onto the main straight, and already you can see him starting to pick up the speed there. Yeah, a lot of uh, dirt that he's picked up off the side of the track too. 
just shows you how hard he's prepared to push as he starts his flying lap hard under brakes down into turn one gets through this section of the circuit nice and clean Jim Zen 2 up towards the Valvoline turn that'll take him through this tough right-hander. Yeah, hard on the brakes there. You can see he may have had a bit of an off earlier on. You can see a fair bit of mud and things on the side of that car. Uh, through turn number four, you can see he's right on the limit there. He gets the car very, very sideways on entry. Let's see what he can do through the handcook sweeper. And, oh, right on the money, hits a bit of a ripple strip. That's where you want to be. That is a double apex corner. You've got to make sure you get that one right and right out wide to the left hand up. This will be through turn number six through the cleavage section. So far, the car looking pretty good, Terry. Just a little bit of understeer at certain parts of the track. You can see it there. Had to get a whole handful of extra steering wheel to get it round. Michael Byrne starts his flying lap on board the Nissan Skyline. Yeah, car number 12 comes through Valvoline corner and doesn't seem to be going as quick as uh, the last car we saw out. And He's going to make his way through Hancock Corner here. He's still on the gas. You can hear it as we go back on board with Jim in his Mitsubishi Evo 9 down towards the hard braking area of the second last turn of the regular track. Turns it in. Once again, double dipping at the steering wheel to get the car through the turn. Oh, look at the understeer there, Green. He's really, really pushing that one. That may hurt him a little bit. He uses a bit of a ripple strip on the outside as well. It all cost time, doesn't it? He's just got this first and second turn complex to negotiate out wide hard under brakes turns it in oh, oh lots of steering wheel there that car floated through turn one but what sort of a time is he going to be able to clock up 133.084 yeah you can see he's really struggling with that car he may have a problem with the setup but uh really really struggling on the steering wheel adam wade now will start his lap in the mitsubishi evo 10 mr casual they call him he's your favorite driver isn't it? it's like he should have a latte <laughs> sitting next to him something i think between sessions he uh, he pops in and does his shopping and comes back to the circuit he looks pretty <laughs> casual about the whole thing doesn't he and that's the that's the point this sort of uh time trial uh motorsport you need to be smooth as michael byrne clocks up a 148.409 you need to be smooth out there that's where you get the quick time particularly in a place like winton raceway which is a race line circuit oh it definitely is i mean parts like the cleavage section if you don't get that right you, your whole entire lap is going to be completely destroyed and uh, this is a part of the circuit that we're referring to and Adam Wade there you can see this thing set up quite nicely through turn number nine and let's see how much of the road he uses that's nice nice body roll out of his car too it's it's flowing smoothly he's yeah, as you can see he's he's relaxed behind the wheel which means he's not overdriving the car uh, beautiful on exit just picking up just the slightest amount of wheel spin but this is the area of the track that so many drivers have had tr issues with these final few turns to come onto the regular start finish straight and wade uh, totally different to what we saw earlier on i just can't believe how smooth this guy is behind the wheel i mean seriously look at the time you're still clocking up quick times oh definitely and he, he as we said before he looks so casual behind the wheel and let's see what he can do through the final two corners before he heads across the start finish line and again so smooth and this is what it's all about you uh, you know the old saying grant you have to be uh, smooth to be fast 133 triple two the time for adam wade on board the mitsubishi evo a trick looking car and he's a, a fair sort of a driver you'd have to say stay with us we'll have more of the top 10 shootout of the hancock tires big time attack right after this Benny Tran is expected to be one of the fastest guys out there this weekend, but he doesn't take his motorsport lightly. This weekend we're to find under the Super Club uh, category, uh, meaning the car is uh, race car base orientated, so we've got full rate, full roll cage, the car's trailer is not registered. Um, we're open for modifications, uh, meaning we've changed the engine to a late model uh, K24 engine from a, a Cord Euro. It's supercharged, um, just modifications beyond a road road car really, and that defines our club. The car's a 909 model to um, Honda Integra Type R, uh, DC2. The car started up two years ago as a road car. Um, it's owned by Brandon Lockwood, and from the, from the start we just uh, built it slowly, developed for uh, Brandon, and we um, basically built it, taught Brandon how to um, 
drive at track days and then um, yeah to this day we co-share and drive and help develop the car with him. This is our first time the car's been here. Um, it's, a bit, it's a bit more bumpy than the tracks we go to. So in terms of suspension tweaking, um, yeah, we can play around with suspension tweaking, make sure the car rides the bumps more closely. But we had dramas yesterday, so we were more, uh, you know, getting things sorted before we started tweaking the suspension. So hopefully today with a better run, we can tweak the suspension a bit further. There's not really something to benchmark our car against. Um, all we do is look towards the quicker guys. Um, you know, we were watching um, the Audi R8, the um, GT cars go around in the minute 20s. So we were, you know, watching, studying clips um, of other cars quicker than us. And then from there, we can try to gauge, you know, how car, how how is our car, what's our speed, what power should we run. Um, so you know, a lot of things plays in hand. I mean, at this track, we had to detune the car. We found it was a bit too much power. Um, so detuning it. Um, short shifting certain gears, selecting selecting the right gears for the track. Yeah, there's a lot of playing the hands in hand. So, you know, we're still learning, but you know, we, we give it our all. And a new lap record by the plane of 50 seconds flat for the entire Winton track. <laughs> <laughs> We're back into the Hankook tyres. Big time attack, top 10 shootout. John Richardson, who's been electric in this Nissan Skyline over the weekend. The R32 down through Valvoline, nice and smooth. Yeah, definitely, and that's what you want to do. Have a look at the grip that those hand-cook tyres have got. The way he turns the car in is absolutely fantastic. Hand-cook turn now, and this is where it can go horribly wrong. And, oh, that's an absolutely perfect line. You want to hit that bump there that uh, just as you're turning in for apex number two. And he's right on the limit of adhesion, too. He's pushing this car so hard. Yeah, like, gee, you, oh, look at that. Sideways on the exit of turn number six. And you can see by the way he's leaning his head that he's on the money. Look at that, Grant. Using all the road. And uh, that thing... It's actually sprung pretty stiffly there, the way it hit that ripple strip and bounced up off the road. That could be by design to get it through uh, the cleavage section, just bounce off the ripple strip, points the car in the right direction. Not sure if that was the aim, but it was effective nonetheless. Down through the left hand, and not much of this lap left to go so far, in spite of the fact that he's right on the limit of what this car is able to do. It's been relatively clean. Yeah, turn number 11, one of the hardest corners uh, on the circuit, just because... Oh! oh! Spoke too soon, runs a little bit wide as he picked up a little bit too much ripple strip that's what you were alluding to a few moments ago Terry down onto the start finish straight he will be absolutely livid with that yeah look that's gonna hurt his time you have to be absolutely millimeter perfect around this circuit in time attack to be up there in the end and he's, he's sideways again. again oh that is a lay it on the line lap what sort of a time does he do it's still quick 132 678 for John Richardson in an electrifying lap, to say the least. It makes you wonder what sort of time that would have been if he hadn't made those small mistakes in that, some of the parts of the circuit. But here we go, Brandon Lockwood, the 20-year-old from Green Valley in the BYP Racing Honda Integra. This is a car that all eyes are on at the moment. And uh, already very, very smooth through Valvoline Corner. Turn number four, picks up a bit of ripple strip. Just sounds awesome, this car too, doesn't it? You know it's pushing hard. You can hear the motor screaming its head off. Beautiful control down through the sweeper. Let's see how much ripple strip Brandon uses. Yeah, they actually had an issue with this car on the Saturday, Grant. Uh, they actually went over the decibel reading allowed at the circuit and had to go in the town, in the Benella to find the workshop late at night. He'll actually put a, a, a quieter exhaust on the car, and luckily for that, they're uh, able to run here on Sunday. That's the one good thing about the people around this racetrack. They know that motorsport is, is vital to the industry, the commercial industry in the area, and they all get behind it, even smash repair places, opening up shops uh, on Saturday <laughs> nights to try and help out teams and things like that, and it's great to see that they're able to help out the, the Honda team get Brandon back out onto the track. Yeah, I think he might need to put a couple of screws in that dashboard as well, Grant. Have a look at the thing floating around there, and it just shows how bumpy the Winton Motor Raceway circuit is. Yeah, it's a very professional race car. This, uh, both Brandon Lockwood and Benny Tran looking to compete in the Worlds later on in the year. And this is uh, very much a, a testing course for their ability to get across there and, and compete against the rest of the world. And you can see by the, the look of this machine, highly modified, got the roll cage in it, all the safety devices. Oh, Brandon, just with a little bit of rear lock up there, but what time does he do? down across the line, a 131.248. Yeah, you could see Brandon there struggling struggling a little bit through the second last corner, and uh, there's a little bit of lift off oversteer. It doesn't take much to put these cars wide because they are going so fast, 
but it did happen. Here's Darren Maurice now on the Mitsubishi Evo 10. And you see the big Foresight sticker on the back of the car through uh, Belvaline corner there. And Hancock sweep for the next turn, and next turn to negotiate rather. And he looks like he's on the money, Grant. Yes, just runs a little bit wide at that section of the sweeper, but gathers it all up. Wouldn't have lost much time as that. Gets on the brakes just a little bit loose oh. on the brakes, tries to turn it in, has to double dip. That will cost time. Yeah, that is commitment there by Darren Maurice. Way too late on the brakes. Trail broke it in. But uh, I think he may have lost a couple of tenths out of that one, and that could hurt his time at the end of the day. But he's still got a few corners to negotiate here now through turn number nine once again. Uses all the road on the exit and puts the pedal to the metal. It says uh, turbocharger spooling up as uh, hard as they can go. And turn number 10 as well. And, oh, look at oh, that, a bit of smoke. Bit of smoke out of the back. I was just about to say, he hasn't missed an apex so far on this <laughs> lap. So he's, uh, even in spite of the fact that he's pushing so hard, he's uh, doing a really, really good job. Yeah, he definitely is doing a great job, Grant. And uh, this is what Time Attack's all about now as he moves his way in the fourth gear, flat shifts this thing as hard as he can get it. So it's all about turns 11 and 12 now. He has to make this count. He made the mistake earlier, got a little bit sideways, so he's going to have to make this perfect now, Grant. Over the line he'll come. Very smooth through that section of the track. What sort of a time does he clock up? 132.741 for Darren Maurice. Well, he's still on the money. That, uh, that will put him right up near the pointy end of the field, and that's exactly what he wants. Impressive sort of a run. Now, Jason Dorrington, the Mazda RX-7 pilot, works very hard, starts his flying lap around this circuit. You'll enjoy this one, Grant. This is one of your favourite cars here this weekend, isn't oh, it? I just think it, both the both that and the Honda DC2, they just look absolutely fantastic. As far as show and shine goes, they get both of them get my tick of approval. <laughs> you know, one of the things I've noticed about Jason Dorrington's car at the front, it's it's quite high, isn't it? It doesn't sit down as low as some of them as he gets sideways through Hancock, and he's absolutely pushing now. Oh, look oh! at the understeer! <laughs> well, if you're unsure what understeer was, there is a classic. <laughs> example and he'd set the car up to be a bit point and shootish that's what terry was talking about through the sweeper where the car was bouncing around but that time under brakes he just turned the wheel and the car just went straight it was like he was on a wet track yeah it certainly was and uh, you can just see how hard he's pushing the mazda rx7 there just judging by that understeer oh and he's understeered again he's completely missed the apex and this lap will be scrapped there's no way that uh there's no way now that he can regather from this one. Now, what it means, punters, if you're, if you're not aware of, of what it's all about, because you have to trail through the turn, you don't get on the gas quicker, which means that compromises your speed down the straights. It, you lose a lot of time when you can't pick up the apex. Now, Jason Dorrington will be interesting to see what sort of a time he does clock up when he comes across the start-finish line. Down through turns one and two he goes. Let's see how it goes through here, because you don't want to understeer at this part of the circuit, because there's a wall there to greet you if you do. Up over the start-finish line, 132.80. In spite of the fact he had two massive understeers, that is a respectable time. Yeah, that is. I'm actually quite shocked with that one. It just shows how quick he, uh, he was going through some of the other parts of the circuit. But this is the one. This is a crowd favourite. Kevin Mackerel in the Datsun 260Z Chevy Power. <laughs> a fire-breathing mongrel of a machine. <laughs> Have a look at it. Doesn't that scare you coming head on towards you? Yeah, you wouldn't want to see this thing in a dark alleyway, I'll tell you. It is a, a scary-looking machine, as Grant just mentioned. Kevin Mackerel, a very, very experienced racer. He's done a lot of hill climbing and super sprint stuff as he comes through Hancock Corner, the double apex corner. And, uh, of course, Kevin... Uh, winning his class several times in the Australian Hill Climb Championship. Uh, probably not as familiar with the Winton Motor Raceway circuit as he is with Mount Panorama, but at the moment doing a great job. Yeah, it looks very smooth. The, uh, I don't know what the time's going to be by the time he comes across the start-finish line, but he hasn't made any mistakes that I've seen. And this car very, very stiffly sprung. It doesn't lean too much. You can see by the onboards that he's not moving around anywhere near as dramatically as some of the cars we've seen. And, and it looks pretty strong under brakes as well. Oh, just a bit of a tail slide as he comes through the left-hander. Did you put the commentator's mocker on him there, Grant? I'm good at it. <laughs> but, uh, he's only got four corners to negotiate now. You see the shift light pop on, pop on in the cockpit. And he's got to be smooth. He's got to be clean. I reckon this will be a low 30. On to the start-finish straight. The regular start-finish straight. He brings the Datsun. A 260Z. 
screaming its head off as it charges towards turn one. Just two more turns, nice and clean to clock up. A good time, just a little bit wide there on the entry. Beautiful on the second part of the turn and the time. A 135.95. Oh. Well done, Kevin. That is the quickest time so far in the shootout. And what an absolute weapon of a car. But here we go. Here is one of our favourites, Benny Tran in the Honda DC2 Type R, the BYP racing car. All business, isn't he? Oh, yeah. He's Absolutely very, all business. Very, very professional guy. And uh, he is going to do well here. I can just feel it. Three turns, number four. Makes his way into the hand cook sweep up. And just so controlled behind the wheel. Oh, yeah. You can see him moving around a lot too in the car. Look at that. You can see the bumps through the sweeper there and hard on the brakes. Now he's doing everything quickly, but he's not doing anything with urgency that tells you that he's done something wrong or he's uncomfortable with the way the car's performing out there on the track. This is a scary proposition for the opposition if you were watching that. Yeah, it is. Oh, look at the right rear wheel lifting in the air. It just shows how much grip this car has got. Let's see if it does it down in the turn number 10. But uh, for a front wheel drive car, this thing handles very, very well. You don't see much lift off oversteer at all, which is one of the biggest problems you're trying to get a front wheel drive car to handle. And uh, the car is very, very well set up. Look, you can have a, a very well set up car. You can have a very quick car, but you've also got to be able to steer it around the track. And Benny Tran is doing a, a fantastic job at the three quarter mark of, of this lap. No mistakes so far, beautiful control, not overdoing the car, not sliding at all. You'd have to expect that this is going to be a super quick time. Only a couple more turns to negotiate. Let's see what he can do down into turn one. Hard under brakes, turns it in. Look, very little wheel movement. Car beautifully set up, 126568. That will be not impossible to beat. Oh, it makes you wonder, is that the time that has just won the hand-cooked Victorian time attack? I think it might be, but let's see what Ben Arnold can do. He's the only one left that can cause an upset, but he has to get a very, very quick time out of this car. Yeah, Ben sporting the open face helmet as well as he gets a bit sideways there out of Valvoline. That another won't thing help. We, no, it <laughs> won't help. You've got to be smooth here. We mentioned that earlier. But another thing about Ben Arnold as well, he'll know this circuit quite well, Grand, as he's from Albury. And he's right on the limit now using all four wheels. Of course, all-wheel drive, twin turbo, Nissan Skyline R33 GTR. Uses a bit of riffle strip there, Grant. You want to try and avoid that if you can? Well, he knows the time he's got to beat. And he knows, he knows it's going to be a mammoth effort, not only by him, but the Nissan Skyline as well. So he has to stay on it. It's all or nothing. It is. It is. It comes down at this moment. And I'll tell you what, very, very smooth at the moment. Turn number nine. Let's see what he can do in the 10. He's going to be late on the brakes here. And, oh, look at that. Braking power in that car is phenomenal. And that, okay, you've got, to, you've got to think as well. These R33 GTRs, they're a lot heavier than the Evos, the RX-7s, the Silvias. Yeah, they're not the lightest car to come out of a production <laughs> showroom, are they? No, they're certainly not. But uh, as we mentioned before, they do make it up in the power range. And uh, here we go through turn number 11. You just see Benny Tran making his way into the pits. 115, 116, 17 now as he tries to bring this car down to the final group of turns to complete the lap. The time he's got to try and beat is a 126.56. That's not going to happen. But can he cement himself into second spot? Up across the start finish line, 132.312. A very impressive time from Ben. Yeah, I think Ben will be very, very happy with that one. It was a smooth lap and... Uh... I think that's pretty much all the car had in it because he didn't make too many mistakes there, did he? Well, in Super Club, it was Benny Tran with the quickest time out there, a 126.568. Impressive. Good luck at the Worlds game. Brendan Lockwood alongside him with a 131.24. And Ben Arnold finished in third with that 132.31. It's a long weekend for us. And yeah, you know, to come away with the um, fastest lap, we're pretty ecstatic. Um, yeah, great team effort by our team, and yeah, we, um, you know, just shows showcase like a, a small car like this can take up to big boys, and which we are you know, very, very happy about. We did a 26.5. Uh, we banked on, we gambled it, we put a fresh set of um, Advent 050s on softs. Um, Brendan um, had the opportunity to go and fresh set. Um, he, did, he did a PB as well, 31.2, and then I jumped in three cars behind and um, we just went out there and gave it our best and we walked away with 26.5, which is a PB for the weekend, and it's just um, under pressure, which is um, pretty happy about.
Well, podium presentation time, and that man was blistering up there. Benny Tran taking the victory here at Winton Raceway in the Hancock Tires Big Time Attack. Absolutely stunning performance by him. Hope you've enjoyed all of the action. We'll look forward to catching up with you next time. Bye for now.